Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So they're back with a Ezreal supplementary guide, and today we're going to be talking about kind of a very good Ezreal build against Squishies. And the main reason I say that is because um, pretty much the standard Ezreal build, I'm not sure if I actually have it here. Um, yeah, something it's going to look something like this. So it's basically normally going to be something like, like the, the two standard core items into either Grudge or Rift Maker. These two can be swapped around. Your last item is generally something like Bork. But I personally find that Bork is not very useful against like non-tanky teams. Like it is okay, but it's not very useful against non-tanky teams. And um, Grudge is still useful, of course, for the slows, but it's not really that essential. And Rift Maker, yep, it's still good as well. But the true damage, yep, it matters. But but uh, you know, I just feel that there are better um, options, which is basically this. So this is kind of the build I like to go against full squishy teams on Ezreal. And yeah, it doesn't really happen too often, but it still kind of does happen. So. Um, either way, you know, you can still, uh, of course, go for these options. So, uh, here, basically, we first want to go for Mana Mune. Of course, Ezreal's core item gives you a lot of mana, extra uh, on-hit uh, effects on both your spells as well as your auto attacks. Then you go for the Gluttonous Greaves. A common mistake here is to go for the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. You don't really want that. You want the Gluttonous Greaves. It gives you a lot of AD and a lot of Omnivan, which is pretty much what you want. Triforce, of course, which uh, got a buff recently. Health, AD, attack speed, ability, haste, all the stats you love, movement speed, and of course the on-hit uh, spellblade passive, as well as the rage passive, you know, lovely, lovely stuff. And then we go into the essence reaver, which of course, uh, whenever you hit a champion, your ability is going to be, uh, damage is going to be increased by, you know, 22.5% uh, when you have essence reaver only, but when you get more crit items, it's going to go up, and we're getting another crit item later on, so it's going to be up to 25%, so 25% extra damage on like your Qs, and sometimes even your ult is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, also, you have the mana restore, which also can be handy uh, from time to time. And then we build a very unusual item, which is Bloodthirster. Now, Bloodthirster, not really the best Ezreal item, but into a squishy team, this is going to be really good. This is basically the Rift Maker replacement, because basically, Rift Maker is like your Omni Vamp item. So here with Bloodthirster, you're getting Physical Vamp instead, which is still pretty good, because Ezreal does mostly um, physical damage. So you get your Physical Vamp, you get a huge amount of AD, 50 AD, together with uh, possibly even more if you're above half health, which with Ezreal, you mostly should be, because you're a really safe champion. So... This huge amount of AD is going to allow you to scale so much better than the AD AP you're getting. Because the AD AP, you know, Ezreal doesn't scale very well with AP. So AD works way, way better. But of course, majority of the times, Rift Maker is still better. It's only against a, such a squishy team that you can't really go for Bloodthirster. And finally, you still want to go for Serelda's Grudge for the utility of having the armor pen together with um, the, the slows. Mainly for the slows, of course. And then for the runes, you want to go for Kraken Slayer. Of course, Kraken Slayer, um, 3 hit passive is going to proc and deal true damage. Of course, you, you can use your Q to proc Kraken Slayer as well, which is really, really helpful. And also, you, are, you have a lot of AD in your build, especially with items like, you know, the Essence Reaver and the Bloodthirst, so a lot of AD in your build, so it's going to scale out really well. Obviously, Brutal for uh, more... Uh, damage against champions on your auto attacks as well as your Q. And in this game, I actually took Giant Slayer just to test out how much Giant Slayer uh, damage would uh, would you deal if you went for Giant Slayer against an incredibly squishy team? And you actually still deal a decent amount, so I honestly think Giant Slayer could still be the way to go, but of course you also have uh, Coup de Gras against a squishy team. This could be, you know, the way to go instead. And then we of course have Bloodline for the Omni Vamp, because Ezreal obviously doesn't need attack speed. And then we have Bone Plating for the extra layer of safety in lane, and, uh, you know, just to get bursted, prevent yourself from getting bursted by Assassins. And then for the spells, we go for our Flash, of course, and we have Exhaust. So, um, that's pretty much it for the loadout. Let's now jump into our gameplay. Okay, so hopping into the gameplay now. Um, as you can see, we're against a pretty much full squishy team, and we have a pretty much full squishy team. Pretty rare uh, in Wild Rift, but um, triple ADC on the enemy team, uh, Lux mid, Sona support, and on our team, um, pretty much triple mage uh, in, in uh, everywhere except bot lane and then we have me and we have Blitzcrank but Blitzcrank I wouldn't really describe as a tank so here we do the classic Blitzcrank trick of walking to the enemy bush and hooking and then we are gonna get a free fir first blood onto the Draven beautiful because honestly we would not have gotten the first blood if Sona was there but since um, Sona was I, I guess off warding in the jungle or something like that. Draven was alone, he got caught by the hook with the, the glacial slow and you know just running him down basically, Draven just dies. This calls back to um, one of the games I played as Draven and I actually died to Ezreal level 1 as well and surprisingly Ezreal level 1 is not as weak as you think. Because um, 
with the Kraken Slayer and with you know if you land your Q, you actually do quite a lot of damage at level one. So it's nothing to really scoff at. So you can't underestimate Ezreal level one regardless of what champion you're playing. So Draven obviously now on the back foot losing a kill to me. Obviously we did not remove any of his stacks as he didn't even have any to begin with, but Obviously setting Draven behind in terms of losing minions and XP is amazing as well and we're actually like 4k, not 4k, 400 go up on the Draven at this point which is pretty good, you know, uh, always good to be ahead of Draven. Speaking of which, Draven gets caught again. Of course this time Sona is here and I also miss my my Q so we still get the Kraken Slayer prop just from 3 auto attacks so Draven's now at half health. And uh, you know we want to play, play patient when we're playing against Draven. You never want to play overly aggressive into Draven because in a long auto attack battle, Draven always wins. So one of the like crucial mistakes people make against Draven is let's say Blitzcrank lands a really nice hook, you get like free damage on Draven, half of yourself is gone. If you continue the fight, Draven can actually end up out damaging you even though he has only half health left, especially because he has Sona to like shield and heal him. So it is going to be very dangerous to get into a long fight with Draven, especially as someone like Ezreal who doesn't really have the best DPS. Like if I was another ADC who had more, more consistent DPS, the situation could be different, but I still don't think it would be a good idea to commit, uh, overcommit onto the Draven. So here now Sona gets caught, we Arcane Shift in, prompt the, the Kraken Slayer. So here once again, we are going to back off straight away because we don't want to be in, a, in, a, in an extended fight with Draven. We want to chunk them out to the point where we can, you know, be in, a, in an extended fight and then win. Also very crucial here is that me and Draven both got our exhaust back up, but Draven actually just popped his exhaust on me instantly. So now we also have a very big summoner spell advantage because now I have an exhaust advantage against him. So here we have a huge wave that has stacked up and we're just going to secure the cannon and back. The wave is going to crash into the tower and hopefully he's going to lose like at least like two minions. Actually it looks like he maybe lost only one minion. Uh, but yeah, so here we have the tier and we're actually going to get an early sheen because sometimes it's actually better to just rush the mana, I mean to charge it up faster, but sometimes it's actually better to get sheen before that because with sheen, uh, our auto attacks, or not our auto attacks, our Q is going to be doing a lot uh, more damage. And if you W auto attack, it's also going to do a lot more damage. So basically, it's going to up your laning phase damage by a lot, which of course is going to be very helpful when things like this happen. Sona gets caught, um, basically running her down. Now, Draven, you can see the extended fight. He is pretty much destroying me. However, he tanks a tower shot, which basically uh, caused him to die. He saw that 1 HP Ezreal and he had to go for it. So he kind of baited himself in there and ended up dying. Uh, to the tower for his troubles. I have to say I got a little bit lucky uh, on that one there that I didn't uh, just die to him straight up but of course you can see here the crucial exhaust difference right because if I didn't have exhaust there I definitely would have just died to him. The only reason I survived is because I had exhaust and he didn't. So um, yep you can see immediately how that exhaust cooldown pays off by getting Draven's exhaust cooldown and now we're getting into a fight uh, and you know, of course, now that we have exhaust, we are able to kill him instead of him able to kill us. So Draven cops another death. You know, he, his stacks are you know in shambles, and we're now one k goal up on the Draven, which is never a spot any Draven wants to ever find themselves in. So here now we're back in the lane. Um, Blitz, Blitz barely misses the hook, and of course, you know, despite the fact we're so far ahead of him, we still want to respect Draven because Draven. Uh, you know, he does insane damage even even though he died twice. So we don't want to get overconfident. A really easy way to get Draven back in the game is you get overconfident against Draven. Draven gets one or two kills, he cashes in some stacks, and you know, you're now back in trouble. So somehow both junglers actually end up showing up, and here it becomes a 3v3 fight. Sona gets a really nice stream and ulti. Draven gets hooked in, uh, but we can't really follow up simply due to the fact that we are getting blasted by the Twitch. Evelyn ends up dying to the Twitch. But um, overall, it still turns out not too bad uh, in my opinion. At least only one person died, better than everyone else dying. But however, this is going to give the enemy team a free dragon. So that is, um, of course, um, not exactly the best um, scenario. So either way, our brand just randomly face checks into the dragon by himself 1v4. I try to get some damage onto Draven, but I'm not able to. Lux outs me, but in doing so, roots herself. The Crux block my... Uh, my shots against her and here he, she gets knocked out by Blitzcrank, I auto attack to secure the kill. Twitch tries to recall in the middle of nowhere, gets hooked in by Blitzcrank and I do finish him off. And Sona is now on the run but uh, we can't quite catch up to her so we are going to be able to just uh, walk away. 
back to the lane, clear up the minions and then look for a reset. Or maybe even um, clear the next wave first and then we look for a reset. Uh, we don't have to be too scared, Twitch is dead and um, Draven and Sona are, are back in base so they're going to be coming uh, to the lane but uh, we don't have to be overly scared of them at this point. We of course still have our Flash and we also have our E and we have Fruit up so we really don't have too much to be afraid of um, over here. And here I'm trying to launch uh, out to snipe this Sona. Sona's at 1 HP. I actually hit her, but she actually lives on 1 HP and she shields herself so my red buff doesn't finish her off. A little bit unlucky on that one. I thought I would have gotten the kill there. Uh, but it does hit and uh, she doesn't die. Draven in the meantime ends up backing. I try to stop him with the Arcane Shift, but a little bit um, too slow uh, on the reactions there. But Draven does end up managing to recall. But with Sona in the mid lane, Draven is uh, obviously still in the base. He actually ults to clear the wave. Um, which is a big waste of Draven out in my opinion. We actually get one plate, uh, which is better than nothing, and we're gonna have to back off because again, we don't want to overcommit onto the Draven. Uh, you know, we we weren't sure if Sona still had ult or not because we weren't paying too close attention to the fight there. So Sona might still have ult, but obviously we can see from the replay she doesn't. So we could get chain CC'd by a Sona stun into a Sona ult, and uh, we don't want that to happen. So here we use our ulti to clear the wave. Draven gets hooked in again, and Draven dies. Bran comes in with the ulti, stacking up the damage. Sona flashes away, I'm gonna flash the follow and finish the kill. Now here I try to finish off the Lux, unfortunately I, I whiff the W. Uh, Lux picks up the fruit, so not quite able to kill her. She is still at 3 quarter or 2 third HP, so I can, still, uh, I can still possibly kill her if I land my spells. I get a Q on, on her, Blitzcrank whiffs the hook, I get another Q on her, she's really low. And here, unfortunately, I miss both my Q and my W. If I hit either one of them, I would have got the kill, but the W got blocked by the tower, so I couldn't hit the W, and I just straight up miss Q, so unfortunately, she does survive. I try to randomly blind snipe down the lane, because uh, I thought she would still be there recalling, but turns out she already made it back to the base, and I actually hit her while she's in the base, but obviously that's irrelevant. So um, any, anyways, even so, we are still in a really, really beautiful spot. We, are, we get our Triforce completed and we are trying to stack our Man Immune as fast as we can. Um, now we are 6, 0, and 1 with 2 items completed. We are by far the most fed person in the game. Twitch is close behind, like 1k goal behind, but he is doing pretty well. He's 6 and 2, so he's, you know, he's doing pretty well as well. So here I'm just going to quickly uh, clear out... Um, the minions and pop the food as well. Here Brand's coming down, Blitzcrank's coming back to lane and I'm trying to check if they're in the bush. So now I conclude they're not in the bush, I can actually walk up. I'm checking whether they're in the next bush. Alright, I don't even bother to check if they're in the next bush. I'm just gonna go for the minions. And you know, they're completely missing, or not anymore, but they were completely missing. So here I'm just trying to get some tower damage on. I'm getting the tower damage, so that can't really do very much to stop me and I just get the tower. Draven ult again to clear the wave, which again is a very big waste of Draven ult. And here I'm trying to snipe down the 1 HP um, Lux, which I do get. And in the same time, Blitzcrank gets the hook onto the Sona. So two quick kills on, you know, one at bot lane and one at mid lane. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice occurrence there. And uh, now we're gonna just hit down, clear out these minions, and push, start to push out. So next up, we're gonna clear the next wave, and we're gonna just keep on pushing. Um, Evelyn picks up two quick kills onto Ash and onto Twitch, and this, in the meantime, we're waiting for the wave to push in. We're gonna just quickly counter jungle the, the Grom, and then we can start getting the tower damage down. So most, at most, we're gonna see Draven and Sona coming to respawn, but we don't really have to be too scared of them at this point. I'm eight and zero, and Draven is like one and three. I'm like three K plus goal ahead of him. I don't really have to be too scared of the Draven anymore. Unless I make some egregious mistake like Arcane shifting in and getting stunned by Sonar or something like that, then I, I you know, obviously I'm just gonna die. But aside from that, you know, we're in pretty good shape. Um, dragon is now up. Obviously, the enemy team did take the first dragon just now, so now we're gonna go for the second dragon just to deny them the soul possibility. And uh, Evelyn hits on over. The uh, enemy team is trying to contest. We can see Twitch just walking uh, through the blue buff area, and I actually get a nice ult onto. Um, onto 3, and uh, Lux actually pops the heal, she dies anyway, and um, Twitch is actually behind us uh, going for the Evelyn, but I decide to actually commit to the fight in the front instead, and um, we're trying to just blast whoever we can, Sona is close to dead, Draven for some reason is trying to uh, get the blue buff, and uh, they are running for the hills, 
we are just gonna clear the wave and see if we can even push for an inhibit. It's pretty unlikely though, so I'm just gonna try to back. Twitch has actually Twitch has actually come back and tries to actually fight me now. Honestly, I was so surprised that I just ran away, but honestly, I think I might have been able to just straight up kill him one v one, cause he is fed, but um, he has only a bark and a runan. Like that's not gonna do too much to me when I have a triforce with uh, mana moons. I could have maybe even tried to one v one him there, but. You know, again, number one, we don't take the risk. Number two, we didn't even try to go for it, so there's no risk to even take. So we're just gonna back now. We get our entire Essence Weaver uh, off of, you know, getting uh, those couple of kills and towers and stuff. So the whole Essence Weaver completed. Another huge power spike for us, especially uh, on our Q. The Q is gonna hurt a ton. So here, on the way out, we're just going to quickly grab ourselves the, the Raptors. We of course do want the red buff as well, uh, but Evelyn's not quite there yet. So before we get the red buff, we're going to quickly rotate to mid to get the minions, uh, which we do get the entire wave. And now we're going to head over to red buff. Evelyn's actually doing the wolves, so hopefully she can just come over to get the red buff. Otherwise, I'll take it for myself. Uh, she is headed over, so I am just trying to leash, kind of leashing the buff for her, um, to just for her to just come in and finish off. She didn't really even have to smite it, because obviously I was not trying to steal it at all. Uh, if I was, I would have basically got it before she uh, came into smite range. But anyway, she smites it anyway. Uh, we are gonna clear the mi next minion wave. You know, of course, maintaining the farm. We've been getting wave after wave after wave in addition to getting kills, which is why our farm is so high. Uh, we are at you know nearly 12k uh, gold in 12 minutes, so nearly 1k gold per minute here. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. So here we know a couple of enemies are around this area. Blitzcrank, you know, takes a bit of damage here, but uh, he he's pretty tanky, so. He's doing fine. Get an ult off across the enemy team. Sona is now left pretty worse for wear. I'm just trying to land my, my poke down while trying to be safe. I still have my arcane shift and my flash and exhaust so I don't feel too threatened here. Uh, Twitch just appear out of nowhere so I'm just quickly arcane shifting away to ensure I don't get bursted down by Twitch. Um, Ash gets hooked in. Ash does end up dying. Draven tries to flash in to kill Blitzcrank but he doesn't even do enough damage to do that at this point. Pretty tragic situation for him. And uh, here we're just staying, continuing to stay in mid lane. I'm popping the control ward. Twitch gets spotted on the control ward. I'm gonna instantly arcane shift away. Oh, and uh, get enough damage onto the Twitch. Twitch uh, ends up dying to Brand's burn. I sidestep the Lux ulti and I'm just gonna lifesteal just a little bit. And uh, honestly, if we didn't put down the control ward, Twitch would have surprised me and I would have died to Twitch. So you can really see the importance of the control ward when you're fighting against Twitch to just spot him out. I just spotted him out, I quickly reacted and moved away, and uh, because of that, I am uh, still alive. If I did not do that, I would not have actually been still alive. I would just die. Because he would have been able to stack the poison to full on me, and I probably would have just died to the full stacked E. So here we're headed back to mid. Surprisingly, we have not gotten mid tower yet, despite getting two towers in the bot lane. So we are really trying to get this mid tower, uh, if possible. The other lanes are all kind of just pushing in already, so we really just want the mid tower. Draven, for some reason, is running at me, um, even though he can't really see my team. My whole team is actually here, so I'm just trying to bait the Draven in. Here I get off a nice alt, hits the, the, the Sona. Both him and Sona are really, really low now, and we're just going to finally get the tower. Blitzcrank, Hulk doesn't hit once again, uh, but I'm going to land some poke here uh, onto them uh, in the meanwhile. Uh, finally, the big screen hook lands. Uh, we one shot the Lux, who really isn't even that valuable, and yet we get stunned by Sona allowing Twitch to get off an insane amount of damage. Honestly, at this point here, I thought that I was dead to the Twitch poison, but I somehow survived on one HP. I can't even see my HP bar. Launch out down just to help my team out. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't hit anyone except the Ash and base. And now uh, we're going to just recall and uh, get the Bloodthirster components out. Honestly, no idea how I survived there. Uh, and we're actually going to be able to get the Bloodthirster, I just need to wait for a couple seconds to get enough gold for the Bloodthirster. And yeah, now we get the Bloodthirster, huge amount of physical vamp uh, of course now coming in. And meanwhile my team is just doing the dragon, they do get the dragon of course, and I'm trying to get the red buff. Uh, of course helping uh, out the Evelyn, so 25% extra damage now because we obviously now have uh, you know, the, the double crit item. So 25% extra damage whenever Essence Weaver is up, pretty amazing build especially against a squishy team. Uh, this build is just made to deal with a squishy team. So we're paying for Baron because my team is like 10k gold a hit. Um, so we are really strong in uh, multiple lanes. Obviously most of the leads honestly in bot lane. I'm 3k gold ahead of Draven and Blitzcrank 3k gold ahead of Sona. So we have a 6k gold 
uh, lead toll in the bot lane. Um, but Evelyn and Bran are on are, are on part of the counterparts. The other 3k goal comes from Ash. So here, Blitzcrank does a very risky move of actually hooking the Twitch in when Baron was about to die. And Twitch nearly stole the Baron because of that. I somehow managed to kill a, a half health Sona just with one ulti, uh, I guess, Essence Reaver uh, damage. So um, she dies, and uh, off of that, the whole enemy team gets aced, and we basically just win the game here. We can just run down mid with the Baron minions and end the game. So hopefully you guys saw, you know, how powerful Ezreal is, like even the full damage variation of, of, of Ezreal. Super duper strong, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, um, and goodbye. Victory!